All right, Yelani, so here's another manometer problem. This one's a little bit more complicated, so I wanted to show you this one because on exams, they try to trick you with this kind of stuff. So look, a U-tube manometer is connected to a closed tank containing air and water. At the closed end of the manometer, the pressure is 16 PSI, absolute pressure. Determine the reading on the pressure gauge right here for differential reading of four feet on the manometer. Express, uh, express your answer in PSI, engage pressure, assume standard atmospheric pressure, and neglect the weight of the air. So that's cool. So no air in this case. Well, there is air, but we can neglect it. So this pressure is the same as this pressure right here. It's all the same, pretty much. So first, we start off with the knowns. We start off with your knowns first. So... They give us the gamma of the fluid. That's cool. So we got gamma of the fluid is 90 pounds per feet cubed. We got gamma of the water. You should know this. This is 9810. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. We are in foot pounds. So this is actually, this is Newton's per meter cubed. We are actually 62.4 pounds per feet cubed. Um, we also know the pressure at two. Let's label this right here, 0 0.2. Let's label this 0 0.1. Uh, pressure at two is 16 PSI, absolute. Um, so the first step here, uh, we're, we're trying to find this pressure right here, right? And we got this pressure, got this height, got this height, so it should be possible. We know the gamma of water and the fluid. Air is negligible, closed valve. We got the pressure there, cool. So second step, what I would do is convert. Now this is why I'm telling you this problem's a little confusing, because look, we got feet, uh, feet here, feet cubed, pound per square inch that's what that means right so inch squared so feet and inch you got to convert some stuff so let's start off converting hmm well let's keep everything inches um because they're looking for psia i'm sorry psi gauge so pound per square inch so let's just convert everything to inch right away so the gamma of our fluid is 90 pounds right Per feet cubed. Now to convert this, let me do it this way so you can see the. Ooh, what happened here? So you can see the conversion easier per feet cubed. Now we have feet at the bottom, so we're gonna need feet up top. Uh, we know one foot converting to inches, twelve inches, right? When you multiply anything by one. This is one, right? One over one feet over 12 inches is just equal to one. So that's all we're doing pretty much. So, but this is cubed. So we got to cube both the top and the bottom. And that's going to give us a gamma. Let's write it over here. Gamma F. There we go. Let me put it right here so you can see. Gamma F is equal to 90 divided by 12 three times, right? Just 90 over 12 over 12 over 12. That will give you 0 0.0521 pound per inch cubed. Do the same thing with water. You'll get 0 0.0361 pound per inch cubed. And let me, yeah, so we're pretty much good on this piece right here. So hold on, give me one second. I'd like to cloud it if I'm come back to it later. So we also have to convert this pressure, right? Um, It's PSI absolute. We want gauge pressure. So you sh I'm not sure if you'll be taking thermal at the same time, but you'll know that to convert Celsius into Kelvin, you just add 273, right? So, same thing with gauge pressure and absolute. So, to get the absolute pressure, or to get the gauge pressure, in this case, if you have absolute, to the gauge pressure, you will just add 14.7. So, that means, third step, 
is the pressure. We know our absolute. There's a formula, right? I'm just rewriting it, what I did up top. This is 16 right here. So that means our PG is equal to 1.3 pound per inch squared. And this is gauge pressure. So that's the pressure right here, pretty much. So now let's go back. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's move forward to step four, the equation. So if you saw the other video, you know you just start at one point, you end at the other point, but you set it equal to this point. So let's start it. P2, all right. Mm, well, actually, can we do P2? Let's do P1. So start at P1. P1, uh, we're going up. So that's a negative right there. And it's a uh, working fluid is water times our height. And that's 24 inches. Okay, so that's uh, 24 inches. That's 48 inches right there. Now we subtract because now we're here, right? We came up to two feet. Move this way because all this is negligible. Now the distance from here to here is four feet, 48 inches, and it's a uh, gauge fluid. So let's do gamma of gauge fluid times 48 inches. And that is gonna equal our destination, P2, okay? So P1 we're looking for minus our gamma of water and then yeah sorry gamma of water so sorry i'm just re looking at all this kind of stuff right here so that was 0 0.0361 i'm not going to put the units right pound per inch cubed over when you multiply it by an inch you get a pressure unit pound per inch squared so times 24 minus gamma of that one 0 0.0521 times 48 is equal to 1.3 uh, if you do the math right here you'll get p1 minus 0 0.8664 minus an even 2.5 and that's equal to 1.3 Move everything to that side, you'll get your P1 is equal to 4.67 pound per inch cubed, a uh, squared. Yeah. In other words, 4.67 PSI gauge. And that pretty much sums up this one. Um, something to take away on this one is the, the formula, right? You want to know how to convert gauge to absolute and vice versa. It's just a simple formula like this, but it's easy to forget. I know I used to forget it every here and there. So just make sure you know that. And then also the, also the main takeaway in these problems is like I told you, make sure all your units are the same when you, once you start doing the formula, because this will mess you up. So that's how the exams try to trick you. But yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it.